Today we are doing very, very, very short notes, probably the shortest notes that you'll have, maybe all year. Um, but we're going to really quickly talk about a couple of natural hazards because we're going to be doing um, earthquake and volcano activities in class. So some of the natural hazards that can occur due to uh, geologic reasons uh, would be earthquakes, volcanoes, floods, and mass movements. So we've already talked a little bit about an earthquake and what would cause an earthquake. We said um, ordinarily when we think of those transform faults, the ones where the two plates move uh, parallel to each other and one kind of snaps like a rubber band, um, that's ordinarily what we think of causing an earthquake. And we said a good example of that is the San Andreas Fault out in California, and that's why they have a lot of earthquakes. Um, so here the definition says stress in Earth's crust can cause solid rock to deform until it suddenly fractures and shifts along the fault, producing a fault. Um, there's two main, oops, two different types of earthquakes. What we're going to find is this deep focus earthquake actually happens due to subduction. So it would do, be due to, um, I guess, convergent plate boundaries. Uh, one plate would slide underneath of another one, and the one plate gets jammed and pressure builds up. And then it says, and you get a sudden movement, and the plate slips under the other one, causing a very big earthquake. So that's a deep focus due to subduction of a plate. Shallow focus is plates just sliding past one another, so that's kind of what we know as the, um, the transform fault. And again, they're trying to slide past each other, they get locked up, and then suddenly um, they're able to snap free of each other, and that generates the earthquake. And then just a couple more terms on the slide that I want you guys to be familiar with um, in terms of earthquakes. Uh, the place on Earth's surface, uh, which is directly above where the earthquake has occurred um, deep below, we call the surface point is the uh, epicenter. And then the point below where the actual, that initial movement takes place is the focus. So that's where the plates actually got stuck and eventually freed themselves. Um, earthquakes are measured using the Richter scale, which is a logarithmic scale, and that measures the magnitude of an earthquake. Um, tsunamis, we hear a lot about those. Uh, a good number of tsunamis are actually caused by an earthquake that occurs out in the water. And again, so imagine a plate is trapped and it finally gets free. It's going to um, create these movements, which we're, we'll talk about the S and the P waves here in a second. So it generates this wave. Um, the water builds, 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 it creates this enormous wave, and that's what a tsunami is. It's a really big wave, um, oops, oftentimes due to an earthquake underwater. Uh, let's see, and then here we have different ways that we can kind of control and prepare for earthquakes. We have our maps, and I've already showed you guys the map of uh, all of the fault lines, where we see all of those volcanoes. This is also a good indicator of where you're going to see earthquakes, too, because, again, obviously, your earthquakes are going to occur where we see different types of um, fault lines. Um, we can also look at historical records, see where earthquakes have occurred, where the uh, you know highest magnitude ones have been. That can kind of help us to stay prepared for that. Um, a big thing is improving on building codes because, as this last item says, it says most people actually die from poor construction of buildings. Um, so just building sturdier buildings, um, educating people on what to do in earthquakes, that's really going to help save a lot of lives when it comes to an, an unexpected earthquake occurring. And scientists are hoping to be able to predict them better, but you know, up until this point we really don't have any indication until... Um, you know, right before it's getting ready to occur. So we're, we're trying to create a system where we can predict them a little bit better. So we said when an earthquake occurs, it's actually, you, these plates are slipping past each other and they finally are freed and they're going to generate these waves. Um, there are two main waves, and we call them seismic waves. Uh, the first one is called a P wave, and that's for primary because it's the first wave to be generated. And then the S wave stands for secondary, this is the second one to be generated. So when this movement happens with the plates, the first type of wave, this P wave, as it shows here, it moves in a compressional motion, similar to a slinky or a spring, if you were to have somebody else hold this. and um, give it a little push, it would have this compressional motion through it. 
and the S wave is going to do this weird little um, perpendicular, like up and down movement. Um, and it's perpendicular to the plane in which it's traveling. Um, then we have surface waves, and a surface wave would come after this, and a surface wave would be what we actually see doing the destruction up where we are. Okay, so that's about it for earthquakes for now. We'll come back and do a uh, web quest about them in class. So now on to volcanoes. Um, we've talked about where and how volcanoes would form usually due to subduction, uh, and again that could be due to an um, oceanic plate going beneath a continental plate, and that would cause volcanoes to form on land, or if it's an oceanic plate diverging below, sorry, converging below a, um, another oceanic plate, we would see those volcanic islands out in the middle of the ocean. <clears throat> so a volcano forms when magma kind of leaks up, up to the Earth's surface, forms a mountain-like structure, but of course there's magma underneath of it, which would make it a volcano. Um, three different types of volcanoes. The big one, most popular, the prettiest ones, are these composite cones. They're huge, so as it says, they're large, they're steep-sided, they're very explosive, they have very thick magma that comes up. Uh, they're mostly associated with these convergent plate boundaries we just talked about, probably um, oceanic to continental. They have lots of gas, lots of ash, so they're, they're very, very powerful uh, volcanoes. So some good examples here be Mount Rainier out west in Washington um, of our country. Same thing with Mount St. Helens. Mount Fuji is in Japan. Kilimanjaro in Africa. So those are all big, beautiful composite cone volcanoes. Second type we'll talk about is called a cinder cone. This is kind of like a baby composite cone. Uh, it's very small, very simple. It's got kind of a similar shape as the composite cones, but again, much smaller and simpler. Um, a lot of times they have this bowl-shaped crater at the top. Um, they're known as the smallest and weakest volcanoes. And examples of these, when I looked for examples, nobody really ever detailed specific names of volcanoes, but they said we've got a lot of these little guys out in the western uh, North America. And then a shield volcano is kind of like a big, wide, flat volcano. Um, See, so these are flat. These are usually non-explosive or not as explosive as your huge composite cone volcanoes. Um, lots of liquid basaltic lava, so not that thick granite type lava, more of this liquidy lava. These are going to be more associated with divergent plate boundaries and hot spots. So the other ones we're talking about convergent. Uh, we've, again, we, last notes, we looked at pictures of how that forms. These ones are more of where the plates are diverging. And here you can see, this is a really good picture. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger here. So here we see a divert, we see two plates diverging, we see that magma coming up, it's forming new crust, this builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up eventually until it forms probably a landmass that has volcanoes on it. So a really, really good example of this would be um, Hawaiian Islands. Okay, they're formed by a hot spot. We've already talked about that. And so this is actually not even at a uh, divergent plate boundary if this is Hawaii that we're talking about. Remember, Hawaii, we said, is from a hot spot that can occur in the middle of a plate. You've just got this really hot area of magma that kind of breaks through the plate and forms this chain of islands as the plate moves, moves along. This is a just kind of, again, a wide, flat shield volcano. This is showing that liquidy lava that you would have from the volcano. Okay, another type of natural hazard is called mass wasting. Uh, this is going to be movement of rock by gravity. So it says examples of this could be slumps, creeps, rock falls, landslides, and mud flows. Um, we have lots of good pictures of all of these. Here's some good pictures of this is just either a mudslide or um, a landslide. Okay, gravity pulling down all this kind of excess land. Uh, we have the same thing happening here. Um, factors that would affect this would be how uh, steep that slope is, how, how much moisture we have in the ground, how many roads and buildings are in the area, and any fires that have occurred recently. 
Uh, and then subsidence, this is a really good picture of subsidence. Um, subsidence is when basically you have sinks, like sinkholes that have formed. Um, and oftentimes this happens when we have caves underground and so you don't have any support system and the, the land above it kind of gives in and it caves in. Uh, this can also be, and we've seen an example of the groundwater one earlier, but if you're removing too much groundwater or too much oil, that can also cause the land to subside and cave in. So these are all good pictures of landslides, mudslides, subsidence. And that is it for these notes. I told you, very, very short notes.